All right, guys. Happy Monday. And it, man, what a special day today, Damon. Happy Valentine's to you, brother. How are you? I'm great, Kurt. And happy Valentine's Day back yeah. at you. Thanks, bro. You know, big bromance here between the two of us. Everybody knows that. So, yeah. guys, uh, wonderful weekend. It was an amazing weekend. Great Super Bowl, except for our friends in the Buckeye State. So, what a great game. And so, our sympathy goes to the Bengal fans out there, but great win for LA. So, guys, today we have an absolutely incredible, wonderful guest. I am so thrilled and honored to introduce you to you, Gene Jones from the Purdue MEP. Gene, good morning. Good afternoon. How are you today? Very good, Kurt. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So this is an honor and privilege. We have so much uncovered in a short period of time. So, Gene, you have a unique title. You're the Senior Services Manager for Cybersecurity and Defense and this is with the Purdue MEP. That's the Purdue Manufacturing Extension Partnership. So let's start here. We're, we're going to kind of, we have an order that we're going to run into as, as our line of questioning. Let's start with this. So anybody out there that is not familiar with what the MEP, Manufacturing Extension Partnership is, could you please enlighten our listeners? What is going on at the MEP? What, does the, what service do you guys provide for manufacturers? Well, yeah, thanks for that, Kurt. Um, Every state and uh, Puerto Rico, uh, and <clears throat> uh, there's even some U.S. possessions that have manufacturing extension partnerships. So we're everywhere. That's number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're really there to support the small to medium manufacturers within those given states. Mm -hmm. We recognize that um, small to medium manufacturers may not have specific expertise in unique areas, you know, for example, cyber or, or defense, which is which is my area. And so we bring that expertise to the small business for the time that they need it at a price that uh, they can afford. Uh, and, and we'll talk about it in more detail. For example, sure. my programs are um, sometimes and many times supported by DOD funding, uh, you know, so cyber and defense. Um, but MEPs have had since 2005, Purdue MEP in, in particular, has had um, a huge economic impact on the state of Indiana, over $5 billion wow. in that 15, 16 year period. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact numbers for every uh, state sure. in U.S. Sure. possession MEP, right. but they all have that sort of impact on the, uh, the small to medium manufacturers in their state. And really, there's a you know wide range of services that I know we're going to get into, but at the it's about improving the top line, how to how to be more effective and efficient to uh, in, in, increase uh, profit, or how to be more effective and efficient in the other direction to reduce expenses. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So this is fantastic, Gene. So again, uh, MEP. There's one in all 50 states plus Puerto Rico. Uh, sometimes they're parked at universities such as yours at Purdue. I know other states uh, have the same thing. In other cases, they're uh, nonprofits or other aspects. So, so again, whatever state you're coming to us from, you want to check out your local manufacturing extension partnership. So, Gene, let's take a deep dive. And so what we'd love to do is we uh, showcase and shine a bright light on the amazing, enormous amount of talent at the MEP network on a national scope. And, man, look no further than here. I know you're a super humble guy. But you could be that humble because your wife fell in love with you, right? So, you know, happy Valentine's Day to you and your, your significant other. But let's talk about your background. And again, uh, you know, you and I goof around a lot, but boy, very seriously, my hat's off to you. God bless you. You are a uh, Navy vet, served our country proudly for many, many years. You're a graduate of the Na Na Naval Academy. You have a master's degree, I believe, from Marymount U University. You have a master's degree from Old Dominion. Damon, total underachiever here, I must say, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, you've uh, you served on submarines all over the world. So, Gene, just could you take us a little bit on on your background, your your service to our country? What led you into the Navy to begin with, the Naval Academy, and just share a little bit on your journey uh, before we'll dig back into the MEP network. Well, my journey. I mean, I could. I I don't want to take. <laughs> you told me that to be humble, but I, I mean, I don't want to take the whole thirty minutes on on my journey through a professional career. But uh, so let's let's go with the let's go with the cliff notes. I mean, I'm, you, you know, I'm from a military family. 
right? My father was a U.S. Marine. And so um, going to the Naval Academy was a natural progression for me as a, mm-hmm. as a graduate of Quantico High School, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, from the Naval Academy, going into the submarine force. Submarine force today, the U.S. Navy submarine t- force today is a nuclear-powered submarine force. Mm-hmm. So I was intrigued by the just the technology, not only of submarines, but um, of nuclear propulsion. And and we go through a career track where there's a heavy focus on engineering, understanding the propulsion plan and the interactions of the systems and uh, continuous training and practicing different sort of scenarios uh, in that environment. And so that, you know, off and on uh, submarines over the course of you know, about 20 years, uh, so submarine to, to shore duty to give you a break because it is a really fast paced environment and you do need a break from it. Uh, so, you know, at, on shore, I did various things, um, training schools, um, uh, uh, manpower jobs. Uh, and then toward the end of my uh, career, it was more executive leadership type mm-hmm. of, uh, of positions. Um, you know, there was a posting in Belgium. There was a posting in Bahrain. Um, and uh, there was a posting in Hawaii. But you know, <laughs> you're probably wishing you had some Hawaii weather today. Uh, yeah, in, in absolutely. York, yeah, right? yeah. This is like 15, 20 degrees out. So absolutely. Did you have a? Uh, so you've literally been all over the world. Was there uh, all sorts of adventures? Like, and we would love to take. You know, if you want to share a little bit, boy, we definitely have time. We would. You know, again, we are so blessed and fortunate. Thank you for serving our country so proudly for you know all over these years. Share a little bit, like any particular things that stand out, or some of your favorite places that you uh, travel to, and all your all your uh, your journey. Uh, well, I mean, I think the, our favorite place that we live is San Diego, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. it's just beautiful. The, the San Diego Bay, the Southern California weather. Yeah. Uh, there's there's just nothing like being able to run outside at this time of year in shorts right. and a t-shirt, right, and see the and see the water gleaming. So that that was certainly a highlight. Uh, overseas, I think uh, the tour in Bahrain, so being in the Arabian Gulf for, for two years and nice. seeing the operations there uh, was was certainly eye opening and just being exposed to the uh, a, a different way of the way the way the world works. It's uh, it makes you really uh, appreciate, uh, as you said, you know, being in the United States and and being able to support these uh, fantastic fantastic businesses and manufacturers you know they can go out start a business and and produce yeah absolutely so gene uh, if you want to let's share let's uh let's transition into your post uh naval career did you uh, you know as you were coming into the end of your navy career were you, what was on your radar what was kind of like boy what's what's next what's my next life look like how did you transition i know you have a you had a stint at uh, caterpillar Another, you know, great American company. Uh, share a little bit. What was that transition like for me for you coming out of the Navy? Well, you know, my last posting was the, the the commanding officer of the Naval ROTC unit at Purdue. So oh, okay. you mean okay. that's that's what brought me uh, to Purdue. Really enjoy uh, Purdue University and the uh, university environment and all of and everything that it has to uh, to offer. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was looking for as, as I was leaving the Navy, I was looking for to extend that uh, career of working in technology environments, uh, program management and technology environments. And so that's what led me to uh, Caterpillar. So I was an application engineer for 12 and 16 cylinder diesel engines for, you know, marine, locomotive, large trucks, yeah. whatever. We work with the design engineers to just pull it all together, which is you know, in the in the Navy, as a nuclear trained um, officer, right? You're working with the the different specialists, whether it's um, electrical, electronic, mechanical, to to make the whole system work together. So that was that was a natural extension going to Caterpillar, and then I had an opportunity to come back to Purdue um, in a leadership role at uh, in a uh, visualization um, uh, technique center in. And then uh, back to well, then to Purdue MEP about four years ago. Okay, and I, I don't know if this is appropriate, maybe for the time that we're in. What was the acronym of the the agency that you were with uh, prior to your current role at the MEP? 
Oh, vaccine? Vaccine, right? <laughs> it has nothing to do with, with <laughs> vaccines. In, in fact, in fact, you, you know, if that if that organization still existed today, they would probably get too many queries going in the wrong direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You know, so the, the V the VA there stood for visual analytics. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in interoperability environments had nothing to do with yeah. Real vaccines. Yeah. I, so it's in, so again, guys connect with Gene on LinkedIn. And, and I just, I thought I got a little chuckle when you look and you see vaccine for the, your previous role. And I'm like, well, they probably, you know, it's like, like Corona, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Corona uh, beer, you know, like, boy, what a right. bad timing to have that name for. Yeah. For beer, right. Right? So, exactly. yeah. so, um, so Gene, let's talk a, a little bit about cybersecurity and your role now. And so there's a, now is this an agency DMAP, the defense manufacturing assistant program? Is that, is that what you're part of now? Um, no, I mean, you mean IDCAP. IDCAP is okay. um, IDCAP is the Indiana Defense Industrial Base Capability Accelerator Program, and okay. that is that's a grant program that we we went to the Department of Defense, the Office of Local Defense Community Cooperation, made a case to them that hmm. Indiana businesses could become stronger. Um, contributors in the defense industrial base if they were supported by some funding, which is a natural fit for Purdue MEP, right? Because that is the goal of the MEPs around the nation to make companies stronger. This grant program focus is more uniquely focused on the defense industrial base. And we call it, we call it IDCAP for short. Okay. I got it. Okay. A lot of acronyms there. So let's, yep. uh, let's take a deep dive on. Uh, it, would, it wouldn't be defense if there were acronyms. Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So uh, let's talk, you know, so you're, uh, I'm going to, uh, Try to connect like a little correlation. So life on a sub. So, you know, leadership roles through your career in the Navy, uh, you know, traveled all over the world, lived in some wonderful uh, new places with your family. And so then you transition into civilian life. You go to big corporate and now at Purdue. What was uh, just a little bit about that transition from uh, submarine life, you know, running the team, uh, you know, you know, people's lives depend on that teamwork and so on and so forth. Talk about like how did that experience lend into like your expertise here at the Purdue MEP? If that did that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, in my case, you know, I went from the first twenty years or so on individual submarines to transitioning to the big Navy enterprise, okay. right? Going to the Supreme Headquarters Allied Command uh, Europe or working at the top level for the. Uh, chief of naval personnel for enlisted policy for the navy so i was already i had already made the transition out of that okay you know that the bubble life yeah, uh, yeah. on the on the submarine into the enterprise life and yep. so uh, that was a pretty natural transition to go to uh purdue uh y- you know as a department headed purdue while i was still in the navy and then go to caterpillar that but i think the the connection still is um, it's a high technology environment. Mm-hmm. Pur- Purdue MEP and the other MEPs are trying to introduce uh, technologies that will solve problems at the at the um, at the small business level. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, that, that I think is the natural connection. Nice. Okay, so let's take a deep dive now into Purdue MEP specifically. So, so again, so for anybody out there, if you just chimed in, we're with Gene Jones from the Purdue uh, University MEP Manufacturing Extension Partnership. So, Gene, uh, all the MEPs, uh, you know, for different states, different, uh, you know, they're going to tailor it to like their local needs of their manufacturers. So, we're going to talk specifically on what's going on in Indiana, right in the heart belt, heart, heartbeat of America thousands and thousands of manufacturers, you know, um, amazing manufacturing going on in Indiana. Share a little bit of some of the benefits that a man, if a manufacturer hasn't worked with their MEP, share some of the amazing benefits and, and services that you guys provide on a regular basis. Yeah, I'm happy to. You know, as I said a moment ago, small to medium businesses, they have a few number of people doing a number of tasks. Mm-hmm and hardworking, really smart and dedicated people, but they don't, they don't have deep expertise in a given area. And I think that's where the MEPs around the nation really support uh, their businesses is they bring that deep expertise, as I said, for the time period that it's required Mm -hmm. and at a uh, price that uh, they can afford 
in order to make uh, a transition step for the business. You know, for example, we have deep expertise in uh, various certification paths, whether it's ISO or AS. Um, and, you, you know, in particular, we have a team that gets companies ready for their ISO or AS certification with 100% uh, pass rate with a registered wow. agent for their certification. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's over the course of, you know, what the uh, four years that I've been here mm -hmm. uh, at, at, at the very least. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of thing. And at the end of that process, they have they didn't have a program in place previously. They have a program in place um, at the end of it. Um, so there's deep expertise there. There's deep expertise in all of the lean disciplines, you know, eliminating that, that waste from, uh, from the company, highlighting it, recognizing it, and the different techniques used to eliminate it. Uh, deep expertise in Six Sigma, whether it's green belt training or black belt training. So it could be MEPs can either offer training or they can offer uh, consulting. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I mentioned specifically, you know, two specific quality programs, but there's quality training. Let's say that a company, they already have an established program, but they want to uh, learn how to audit their own program better, or they want to, they want an audit of their program before their registered agent comes in because they could, they can't withstand the disruption of not having a, a good certification process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's lean quality. We have a uh, new this year, in the past year, we have a digital manufacturing technology center. Uh, and uh, in that center, there's how uh, virtual reality can be used within your manufacturing environment um, in, in order to either train or next step in the manufacturing step-by-step -step assembly process. Um, there is uh, additive manufacturing. We have technology specialists for additive uh, manufacturing, perform an assessment on how additive manufacturing could work for your business, um, perform a return on investment. If you spent this much, when would it, uh, when would it pay for itself, whether that's additive manufacturing or collaborative robots, mm -hmm. right? There's a session coming up at our Digital Manufacturing Technology Center here shortly that talks specifically about the different uh, end of arm tools that you could use on a collaborative robot for different and uh, different environments. Uh, we have an expert in uh, sustainability and energy efficiency. You know, there's uh, you know many small many companies in manufacturing you, they use a lot of compressed air. You don't think about this much, but they use a lot of compressed air. And there could be a lot of wasted energy by those compressors cycling on and off, just hundreds of dollars a month. Right. Uh, programs associated with energy efficiency of lighting. So you, there's a well-lighted manufacturing space. Leadership. The, you know, there's in the past few years, there's been a lot of turnover at the at the front line level. Mm -hmm. And and some of the of the folks who have uh, been assemblers perhaps in the past are now required to be the leaders in manufacturing and they really make a big difference for not only the efficiency but the morale of your organization mm -hmm. and so we have a really good uh, leadership program and leadership trainer who um, spends some quality time getting those frontline leaders tuned attuned to the things that they uh, need to monitor and watch um, as a as a frontline leader mm -hmm. um I could go on. You can keep. <laughs> hey, keep dude, this is. It's this is things, yeah. Go ahead, David. It's a lot of good things that are helping manufacturers. Right. It, it really is, and and they need to understand that that you know, MEPs like the Purdue MEP are are helping these companies every day be more competitive and improve, so they can continue to be successful. And like you said, the resources are as needed and affordable, so it, it really does um, provide a win win for these companies that utilize the MEP services. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, I even I didn't even mention my specialty area, right? So right. Um, with cyber cyber and defense. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're connected to the other agencies in the state that are supporting uh defense. Uh so we you know we push you to the right uh the right stakeholder to support that. And in the area specifically of cyber, not only not only is it a compliance requirement within the defense mm -hmm. industrial base to get the the various checks in the box. 
But just, I mean, you just read the news every day. Yeah. Someone's getting hacked, you know, ransomware. And um, it's enough to drive a small business out of business. You know, I, I won't quote the numbers because, you know, the numbers are pretty dramatic, like, you know, two thirds of all small businesses within six months of of, uh, of a ransomware attack or, or out of business. It's a big number. And, and yep. wherever you look, whatever the number is, it's it's bigger than uh, than you would imagine. Yeah. So there's a way to prevent that. And it doesn't have to cost the farm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some foundational things that can be put in place um, um, with out grant su support, but we bring grant support. Uh, we're fortunate at this point, and I don't know what other states have, but we're fortunate at this point to have some state funding that will help with foundational cyber practice in it, practices in addition to the DOD funding that will help at a, at a higher level. So, you know, I would just encourage any of the listeners, if they haven't contacted their MEP and explored that area, to you know to really do that and ask about it and just because there's not funding to help them today doesn't mean that there won't be funding to help in a few yeah. months so it should be a continuous conversation mm -hmm. uh you, you know that uh, that mep should be sort of on speed dial i have the following yeah. problem what does the what does my state's mep um what can they offer me and um I, I, along with many of my colleagues, if we don't have the right resource for you, then we help you uh, find the right resources. No, this is fantastic. So, so again, if you're just joining us, uh, Senior Services Manager for Cybersecurity and Defense at the Purdue MEP, our dear friend, Gene Jones. And Gene, this is so critical. And, you know, as we know, you know, God bless our manufacturers. They are so busy. They are struggling with, you know, their supply chain issues right now, labor shortage. So, I, like, I love the leadership uh, training program that you uh, discussed. What a great way to help retain uh, and keep on, uh, you know, previous employees, attract new employees with these leadership programs. I believe uh, back to cyber, you know, uh, some of these manufacturers, small entrepreneurs, they feel like they're in a silo, you know, their nose to the grindstone, just trying to get through the day. And it's just great having a trusted, reliable resource such as the Purdue MEP, you know, parked at one of the best, you know, top universities in the country to help them and let them know like, hey, you're not alone on this journey. And I believe you have a cyber uh, program training this Friday, don't you, on, on Friday the 18th? In fact, we do. And it's uh, the session this Friday is focused on what is the correct compliance level mm. for a company if they're mm. within the DoD space. And the answer to that decision, uh, there's two main things that why this is a really important topic. Number one is the difference between being level one and level two is about a hundred thousand dollars and about a year of work. It's a huge <laughs> difference, right? So, you know, not knowing the right level yeah. is a is a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and the and the second is is that. You know, it's it's all based upon the type of information that you receive. If if you don't receive controlled and classified information from the Department of Defense, then you don't need to be level two. You can be a level one mm -hmm. and just institute those foundational practices. Right. Um, but I, I mean, I will say that at neither one of those levels does the 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 risk of uh, cyber attack get eliminated. Right. But it does get reduced. You don't, you don't want to be the slowest gazelle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good one. In cybersecurity, you don't want to be the slowest gazelle. So. That's a that's a perfect analogy. So yeah. so again, uh, great topics here. You know, just kind of in recap, you know, uh, any services that you're looking to, to provide and it's just worth the phone call. You know, so whether lean, ISO, different certifications, uh, as Gene said, expertise in cyber. And boy, if, you know, for small manufacturers, all these other fires that they're putting out, you know, yeah. not to say that they're intentionally ignoring it, but boy, they can only just, you know, so many bullets are coming at them. They can only handle so much, but boy, just to be proactive and just to go to a webinar, just go to a workshop, go to a training, pick up the call, pick up the phone or drop an email to Gene and just say like, Hey, you know, what, what do I need to know? 
I know nothing about this. Where do I start? So, so again, it's just such a, a great, wonderful resource for a shameless plug. I know you do a lot of online marketing services. We have a fun webinar workshop planned on uh, Wednesday, the 16th. And I dropped your link for the training, um, for the cybersecurity training in our link LinkedIn thread here. So guys, so if, uh, wherever you're coming from, check out link, uh, Gene's training on Friday. We have a great fun e-commerce program on Wednesday at the Purdue MEP. I know we have a nice lineup of folks that are in attendance. And so we're looking forward to that. Gene, what other, uh, I let's, you know what, God, I'd be uh, shame on me if I, let's dig into your team. Okay. Uh, I've had the honor and blessing of uh, meeting a number of, of folks on your team. I know your director, uh, David Snow, we have Kyle, Renee, uh, Damon, if you remember, Renee Stewart was a, yep. a guest of ours. What a, a breath of fresh air. What a gift that she is. Uh, I'm friends with Kyle. We have Julie. We have, uh, my goodness, uh, Bill Logan, Kelly, uh, Ju uh, Julie just joined your team, Michelle back. I got to give a shout out to Michelle. Talk about, you know, just an enormous amount of talent and skill set. And folks are just so passionate about ha helping manufacturers at the Purdue MEP. Just your uh, art. I got to give a shout out to our friend Art, of course. Uh, and forgive me if I'm leaving, whoever I'm leaving out. I know I'm leaving plenty out. Just share a little bit of the talent and uh, what's going on uh, underneath the hood at the Purdue MEP. Yeah, I mean, as I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I started off with the qualities with the uh, areas of lean and quality. I mean, our, our our lean experts. I mean, this is something that it's not something that they picked up last week. Yeah. You know, this, this is. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is this is not something that they got from a uh, uh, from a from a book that they decided to read during the pandemic, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> These are folks who have been in lean for their entire careers, and they have deep expertise in uh, not only just training and consulting, but actually uh, running uh, lean programs within a company um, uh, and, and on the quality side as well. I mean, our quality mm -hmm. folks are the former quality directors for individual companies who've had responsibility and run their own uh, their own programs. You mentioned Michelle Beck. <clears throat> Uh, our manufacturing extension partnership, like many others, we run a wide range of workshops uh, and events. Those are, you know, those are wonderfully led by uh, by Michelle. So all you have to do is you go to your MEP's website, look for those workshops and events. And workshops, they provide uh, even a more cost effective way to get training in a, in a particular area, right? Because you're going to a yeah common location joining with other folks to really bring the pro the price of a, a day of training down to you know in some cases ninety nine dollars or 199 dollars very very cost effective um let's see let me let me just i'm just trying to i'm trying to think of uh the other areas that i have not mentioned previously in order to prevent it you mentioned art yeah well art um Art is taking his expertise in lean and bringing it into now the food service quality yep. area, yep. right? There are, there are very specific certifications associated with uh, food and food related industry yep. manufacturing. Um, Art and another person, uh, Scott, um, are, they're trained in how to uh, certify businesses in those areas and uh, really taking off that side of of Purdue MEP's capabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Art's a food and beverage guy and just uh, an enormous amount of expertise and experience that he brings to the table. And it's just, and, and so for any, like say if you're a solopreneur out there, uh, maybe uh, COVID threw your curveball and you're not even the accidental uh, entrepreneur. Maybe you're like, geez, I'm the, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur, but this is what, you know, where life brought me. Or maybe you've invented uh, you're an inventor, creative uh, folks. Uh, Damon, we run into plenty of folks through uh, different MEPs around the country yeah. that uh, they've invented their own product or, you know, out of a passion, what have you. So even if you're, you know, you're thinking, oh, geez, you know, I'm just starting out. I'm in my living room. You know, if you're just starting out and you're manufacturing a product, uh, you know, you fit with the MEP Good and time. they're there to help you get off the runway. So even, you know, for our manufacturers that have been around for 200 years or you've been around for two months, you know, the MEP has a service and an expert on the team to help you. If I didn't mention, I have to give a shout out to our, our mutual friend, Kyle. Uh, boy, God bless him. He had his son, Roger, during COVID. And Kyle's just such an inspiration. Uh, great manufacturing background that he brings to the Purdue MEP. 
Uh, so, you know, again, guys, I just, you know, and Gene, what are you, you're 40 plus strong on your team, I believe. At, at yes. The- yeah. We're, we're, you know, we're 40, 45 people. Yes. Yep. So very strong multi talent. And the great thing is even in, you know, as a manufacturer, as Gene said, like, say, I have fractional uh, needs. I have small, you know, little project here or just things that I need to understand better, like cyber, lean, ISO, any of these other aspects. I'm new to manufacturing. They can help educate you, get you in the right uh in the right direction. And you also work with all sorts of third party consultants. I have the honor and privilege, uh, you know, as a third party consultant to your team and and different MEPs that we work with. And so it's great because you can bring in those other subject matter experts on whatever service that, uh, you know, whatever issue or fire that they're trying to put out. Correct. Yeah, that is correct. So, um, you know, we focused on, and you, you, you helped me highlight the expertise within the team which is which is deep in in the areas that we have but you know we can't cover everything right and so that's why it's really nice to have you know wonderful wonderful professionals like you and damon who we can we we've we've built a relationship with other professionals over time we know that they are within our trusted network we know that they're going to approach clients with uh, using their uh, best interest as one of the value uh, propositions. And so it's just, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be able to, you know, lean on folks like you, Kurt, and uh, and Damon. So I appreciate the interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, for the MEPs that are connected to the university, there's another level of deep expertise that can be brought off the bench. For example, we have uh, what's called a technology assistance program that's mm. funded by the state. And so if an, yeah. if a company has a very specific problem that they want a Purdue PhD to work on for 40 hours, wow. then we may be able to establish a connection there. But you know, it's, it has to be something really specific. For example, we have this uh, metal bracket used in the following application and uh, it is having a pre end of life crack in a specific location. What, you know, why, do, why are they having that mm-hmm. crack? How can the manufacturing process be modified to right. reduce the risk of it? So there's another level of deep expertise that can be um, applied to a small to medium manufacturer's problem. Yeah, Man, awesome. what a gift that is, you know, one of the top engineering schools in the country. And, you know, I know talking with Kyle and other folks on your team when we had Renee on, you know, uh, high level manufacturing solutions, Gene, you know, uh, we've talked automation, robotics, 3D printing, let, you know, anything in electronics, you know, high level circuit board uh, situations and just so many exciting things going on in a great state of Indiana. So Gene, I know you are super busy. I want to be mindful of your time as, as we wind down. Uh, so we'll wrap up on this, on this glorious, wonderful, amazing post Super Bowl Valentine's day. What, a, what a, it's usually not this late. You know, they ran a little late this year. That yeah. Super Bowl, didn't they usually like yeah. a week ago, it's a weekend before usually, yeah. usually the weekend well, before. So well, they, they added games to the schedule. So added, yeah. Something had to give. And you know, it'd be like St. Patrick's day. We're, we're at the Super yeah. Bowl, right? You know, so, yeah, yeah. so uh, Gene, we'll wind down on this. So uh, parting thoughts, uh, just share with everybody out there, you know, again, manufacturer, I'm, I'm, man, I am stressed trying to get through this whole COVID thing labor shortage, supply chain, words of advice. How do you, you know, you guys provide and deliver that peace of mind for manufacturers to help them get through these challenges. What is What's some uh, parting advice and, and what's a great way to connect with you? Obviously we're here on LinkedIn. Great way to connect with you, anybody on the Purdue MEP team and what advice do you have for that manufacturer out there to get through these challenges? Well, I, I mean, I would say that, you know, there's, there's lots of different, um, actions that can be taken. But I would say that if, you know, if a small to medium manufacturer confronts a problem, um, you just don't know all of the resources that are available Mm -hmm. to help with uh, solutions. And so I think, you know, on the list of things to do in this, we call it some solutioneering, uh, on the list of solutioneering uh, actions, calling your MEP to find out if they have any support or expertise or contacts in a specific area yeah. is is a pretty good first step you know as, mm-hmm. I, as I mentioned before you know we, not only do we have internal expertise but we have you know great expertise you know like you and Damon or mm-hmm. if they're university related they could go to a deep PhD level of expertise right, right. 
So call them. And um, in many cases, we have um, funding to help support the effort. It's never going to be 100 percent, but it's better than nothing. Right. Yeah. So I, I would just say, you know, add us to the call list. Um, you, you know, we recognize that, you know, you, you can't fund a, a full staff in every area you're around. Mm -hmm. And so call on us to help you with that. And, yeah. and in particular, we have this great session coming up on the 16th with you and Damon associated with how to um, improve your digital presence. That's right. That's right. Well, G thank you. And what, man, and it's going to be an absolute blast. And so for anybody out there that wants to dig into uh, our program, certainly reach out. I dropped the link in the chat box uh, here on LinkedIn. Uh, reach out to myself on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, uh, linked out LinkedIn to any one of us. We would be honored to connect with you, of course. So Gene, we want to thank you. First off, heartfelt thank you to you for your service to our country, man. I know like I Dude, you're you're a hero. You really are. I mean, like you've you've dedicated. You're from a history of military. Uh, God bless your father for his service. You uh, carry on that that tradition and legacy in your family, and have traveled the worldwide to support our our freedom here in the United States. We salute you. We thank you. You're a blessing. What an honor it's been for me. Uh, getting to know you and working with you this past year and the team at the Purdue MEP. So thank you so much for all that. So guys, we're going to close out the program here. Gene, hang out with us for one second. We want to wish everybody an amazing Valentine's Day. Yeah. Tell your loved ones, but it's been a tough two years here. We're coming to our, our COVID anniversary. Tell your loved ones, give them a bigger hug than normal. Tell them that you love them. If they're at a distance, reach out and say hi, text them. No reason not to give mom or whoever out there a little hello for Valentine's yeah. Day. So uh, guys, go out and have an amazing, incredible week. So again, we're at the Purdue, uh, Purdue program on Wednesday. Gene has his program on Friday. Damon, we have a, a great get, uh, guest speaker on our program on Friday. So lots of things to help you hit your goals. Have a fantastic week, guys, and God bless, and we'll see you soon. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, Kirk.